I promise I won't make any sparks fly. You have my word. If there are no sparks flying, you don't, you don't have to work that hard. <laughs> Let's drink apple cider to rent a girlfriend, chapter 219. Try not to spill it like I did last time. So, I read Rent a Girlfriend Chapter 219, and I was disappointed again. Um, I think Ragey thinks that she can fix, like, a really bad chapter by just throwing in fan service. And I really don't think that's true. You're talking to a guy who loves, 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 loves the etchy genre. And, it, you know, fan service everywhere. Actually, while I was doing research for this video, I rewatched the ending of Strike Witch's Road to Berlin, which is one of my favorite series of all time. And, you know, obviously in the final fight, there's the couple fan service shots and stuff like that. But the reason that fan service works in the last episode, which, you know, it has some pretty dramatic things that happen there. The reason it doesn't feel weird is because the music is so uplifting and sort of the tone shifts in the anime to make you feel, you know, hope. And it's fun and it's exciting and, you know, there's fan service in there and it's just all these happy feelings. I've never read a manga that made me feel like sad that there or confused that there was fan service there if it wasn't like in the horror genre like when Mizuhara appears to the scene wearing a bikini looking beautiful everyone commenting that she's so hot and she's so gorgeous and she's just so lovely and all this type of stuff it's just like you can't use fan service as a band-aid to fix the atrocity that was Rent-A-Girlfriend Chapter 218. You just can't do that. I'm not impressed. And I don't think anyone else was impressed at Mizuhata's beauty either. Not that she's not beautiful, but it's not the time to have her in a bikini. Especially since this is the chapter where we actually see Kazuya interacting with himself. Did you think I was going to say Mizuhara? Because if you did, you'd be sadly mistaken. Of course, Kazuya was talking to Mizuhara, but it wasn't actually her. Kazuya is, because of his insecurity, he is dealing with his, he's coping with his emotions by meeting his assumptions through Mizuhara. Because Mizuhara is not saying anything. Mommy is still in control. If you remember in chapter 217, where Mommy is saying, Hey, don't talk to Kazuya. Keep it a secret. It's between us. I'm trying to save you. Remember. Since Mizuhara is saying nothing in response to Mommy's demands to keep quiet about what they're doing behind Kazuya's back. She's creating a situation where her hands are tied. She can't say anything. So Kazuya is basically just making a bunch of assumptions about Mizuhara. Let's look at one of the lines. When Kazuya says, I figure that's the best way to be sure I don't start more fires for you to put out. I'm saying this a little bit out of context, but by him, Kazuya basically talking about how he's going to be honest with Grandma Nagomi about what's going on. It's going to be the best way for him to put out fires. Now, that sort of struck me as odd. Because I don't recall Mizuhara ever telling Kazuya that he's creating fires for her to put out. Because of that, this is an assumption. The whole, the whole time that Kazuya is talking to Mizuhara in chapter 219, it's just him saying assumption after assumption. And, and here's the thing. He's misinterpreting the rejection because it never happened. It was all in his head. 
what happened was that Mizuhara ran away. Instead of Kazuya asking questions, Hey, what happened? Why did you run away? When you said, I'm sorry, what did you mean? That's a way to have a conversation. That's a way to have good communication. But since he started with assumptions, Oh, I'm, I'm creating all these fires for you. I need to like put them out. I'm going to go ahead and just like tell Grandma Nagomi that we broke up. It'll be so much better for you, right? I mean, I've been making your life miserable. Did Mizuhara say any of that? No? Well, it, it didn't happen. Dude, like, it, it didn't happen. Unless she said it, it didn't happen. You have to ask questions instead of making assumptions. That's how relationships work, or at least healthy ones. One thing that makes Kazuya's conversation with Mizuhara so much worse is uh, the dialogue that Mizuhara has with Mami in Chapter 217, where she says, I understand that I didn't draw a clear line. I know I'm a part of the reason the lie has dragged out this long. But isn't it up to Kazuya-san to decide when to lie and when to set the record straight? And I just can't help but think he's looking for that opportunity. In fact, time after time, he's tried to tell the truth. Mizuhara is admitting that she didn't draw a clear line. And, he, you know, she says in trying to sort of defend Kazuya from Mami saying that he's, you know, this predator and all this type of stuff. She says, Isn't it up to Kazuya-san to decide when to lie and when to set the record straight? Alright? And I completely agree. But in 219, he says, Once we get back to Tokyo, I'm going to tell Grandma that we broke up. This is Kazuya trying to set the record straight. However, it's not really an authentic one, and here's the reason. Since Mizuhara runs from the truth over and over and over again, when Kazuya has tried to confess and tried to be honest with his emotions with Mizuhara, Kazuya has had the boldness to either be accepted as, you know, her boyfriend or rejected as a client. He's ready. Mizuhara, on the other hand, cannot do this. She runs. And in, in doing that, and not being honest with Kazuya, she's sort of... She's sort of ganging up on Kazuya in a corner to the point where the only way to set the record straight is for them to disperse. And this is not a satisfying conclusion because Mizuhara, by not saying anything about her emotions, she's not really rejecting Kazuya. N saying nothing is not a rejection. The Mizuhara has concocted the inevitable conclusion that Kazuya has to break them up by saying nothing. You can argue, oh, we broke up if the person just ghosts you, right? But you can't really argue that oh, y'all broke up or you just don't talk anymore if she said, no, I'm not interested in you, you're a client. Or if they started dating because she likes him, which I think is really what's going on here. But Mizuhara can't come, like can't be honest with herself or anyone else. So, it just it's just so ironic that she says it's up to Kazuya to decide when he's been trying to be honest with her because a relationship is not a one-way street. I can want to date the girl over there all day. But if she doesn't want to date me, well, guess we ain't going to date then cuz I ain't going to force nobody to date nothing. Okay? It's a two-way street, and Mizuhara is, is, is pretending like this is in Kazuya's court when it's in both of their courts. 
It takes two people to be honest in order to move forward with their relationship. <sighs> then Kazia says something that I just, I find very funny. I promise I won't make any sparks fly. You have my word. You, if there are no sparks flying, you don't, you don't have to work that hard. <laughs> They're not in a relationship. They don't even have an emotional connection. What sparks? What sparks are flying, Kazia? You talking about the sparks between your eyes and her body? Because I can tell you, you can't stop those sparks. Clearly. But if you're talking about what most people mean by sparks, which is an emotional connection, you already don't have that. So, yeah, you're not going to have any sparks fly because there were none in the first place. Then, you know, I think Reiji was going for the epic text boxes and stuff like that. Him, you know, thinking to himself and all the stuff, you know, it was such a good time. And I never knew this would be the end of my experience with Vizuhara. The renting days are over and all this type of stuff. Yeah, dude, like it was unsatisfying. Reiji, because <laughs> Kazuya was never rejected. He was ignored. There's a big difference. Being ignored is not the same as being rejected. I'm gonna put that out there, and fan service cannot fix the band aid. And fan service is not the band-aid to a disappointing chapter. You, you can't just fan service your way out of this. We need substance. Thank you so much for watching. And I almost said, I'll see you next time. But nah, you already know what time it is. Let's get it. Let's go. It's time for that trash type B. Let's get it.